do that right now. Now she walks on the set carrying a framed picture of Brad Pitt with her and gets past that incredible security we have here. Now, I go outside for a cup of coffee. I can't get back in. But we got wandering the building. They got him. I think it's fortuitous on the producers' parts to have signed Brad Pitt when they did. Because when they signed him, probably three, four months ago, Interview in the Vampire still hadn't hit theaters, Legends of the Fall still hadn't hit theaters, and all of a sudden, that all happened three, four weeks before we started filming, and they've got the hottest guy in Hollywood. So, I mean, then it'll give time for Roz and Joey to get up and, and make their way over there. And once everybody's over there, then back comes the Pied Piper. Right. <laughs> this way, out of the chair. One of the interesting things about this film was to get Brad Pitt to play a character very unlike anything we've ever seen him play before. I mean, somebody fast and furious and neurotic and frenzied. And uh, we decided we, he really had to train for this role because his voice didn't have the qualities needed to do it. And Brad worked really hard at this. Walking around like this, like this, like this, and they need to know, and they need to know something. You gotta tell them, you gotta wake them up. You gotta go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. And man doesn't like two, does he? He doesn't like number two, it makes him itch. Truth is not how you see it or how I see it or they see it or see it. There's just a truth. There's a truth. And you either see it or you don't. Excellent. Okay, hope it's useful to you. you so what else, what else can you tell me? Well, um, I think some of the dis distraction, the motor movement, kind of, I mean, if we're staying with a manic kind of... Right, right, role, right. Um, you know, some of, some of the motor stuff, I would expect you to get up and probably pace around a little bit. More. Move around more. Move around a little bit more. We can go more, much more irritable. I think so. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. There are happy manics, that videotape that you saw of the lady, or I, I, if you remember. Right, right. right. She's yes, kind of a happy manic. Right. And then there are angry manics who are, who are more irritable, more volatile. We don't have to do you stop me now! Now's the time for all the men to seize the moment! Moment! <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the opportunities, they go, oh, oh, they really dosed Jim. Major load. I mean, we know we've got big name stars to open the film. Yeah, whether it opens it in the right way and lets the audience know what they're in for, that's something else. I'm more worried about the first couple previews we're going to have when the, the studio sees it and the audience sees it and everybody panics. <laughs> it's going to be very different than they expected. And then the shit's going to hit the fan and the panic starts and then the pressure's going to be on. And then they will even more, the more they feel that, the more they will push the selling of it as a Bruce Willis, Brad Pitt movie. But it is how the film got made, by putting some stars in it. Go, 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 go! It's a biggish film with some big stars in it. So it should have bigness to it, but it doesn't. It's all, it's all in the little pieces. It's, it's a film about pieces. But I can see an image of her, and you think, oh, poor helpless thing. And then she goes, wham! And it's, it's so violent, and you're thrown back. And then she's got you. She, and then she was just doing it there, and she hits you the second one, that one, the roundhouse. And now, then she's on you. Is that okay? I don't. I don't agree. I mean, I'll, I'll certainly do it. I'll try it. I just. I think we have a can of worms here. That she's a frail woman. That's why I'm saying give her, yeah. give her a weapon or something, because she could. I could. I could stand here. She could kick me eight fucking times, and I wouldn't really be going anywhere. I'll do anything to make a movie. Uh, you in focus on that one? Oh yeah. That's what it's like. Midway through the production. Terry goes horseback riding and suffers a near-fatal accident. On his first day back to the set, he jokes that if his ability to manage a production is anything like his ability to control a horse, then the film's in serious trouble. Uh, I, I don't have a clue what the film is anymore. I don't, I've lost it totally. I mean, I just know we do one scene after another and we try to make the scenes as good as we can. But as far as having a, uh, a real sense of where we are, I'm not certain because you know, it's kind of like we got all the pieces. Of the, we're making pieces of the jigsaw. Each one we make, and that that's beautiful. And there's that one over here that we do. And I'm just worried about how it all goes together. Okay, that. Uh, we can put it down low. And action.
action. Close your eyes, Paul. Tell us in detail what you've seen in this room. Tell us about the newspapers. Can you hear my voice? How old were you when you left the surface? What does he look like, the man who just spoke? Were you alone when you left the surface? Come on, Paul. Where were you? Where How old were you when you left? Cut. You said, and I just want to make sure, was it that you were depressed or frustrated or? All of those things are, are there all the time. But the reality of making films for me is just, just hard work and, uh, and, um, and disappointment that I can't actually achieve what I can imagine. While much time and energy is spent on the more visually bizarre scenes, the real dramatic work of 12 Monkeys takes place in relatively mundane environments. It is in these scenes that the relationship between Cole and Rayleigh slowly develops. I'm mentally ill. I imagine these things, these people in my head. I think they're not real to me. For Terry, the subtlety of Bruce's performance is the most critical aspect of these scenes. Bruce must appear both tough and vulnerable, rational and delusional. But you're still rational. You're still following the logical path of questioning, like a doctor would. Well, but a lot more than I am. I'm just fielding these things not very well. I'm not that. Except you, 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 I mean, on the other hand, you know, you're starting out with with the thought that you understand what's wrong. You're mentally, di mentally divergent. You're mad. That's bullshit. I'm just... No, but I think that's what you're starting with, the idea that you know, you're mentally divergent at the start. That you think you're insane. And she keeps throwing things at you. They're saying, you're not insane. These things happen. No, they couldn't have happened. I'm mad. This is all in my mind. It's not your mind. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Actually, the stuff we'd done in the car the other day, it didn't have, I just felt it was a bit flat. It didn't have, you know, something. It was, it was, it was too flat. Yeah, it didn't. It needs, that's why I think anger or a kind of bitterness in there, but not whiny. We were just going along with it oh, because- wait, 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 I'm sorry. We're talking about- I'm thinking about two different things. Yeah. You're not talking about the stuff we did the other day. No, 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 I'm talking about that little- Man, yeah. that's not flat. <laughs> I, this was flat because I fucking didn't want it, no, no, no. but I knew it wasn't- Yeah, no, that was- oh, that, that, that I thought you were talking about that whole day we were shooting That's what I'm talking about, that oh, one fuck, way you jump no. out of the car. But that was, that yeah. was told that that wouldn't be used. Yeah. This well, you made sure it wasn't. <laughs> Bruce and Madeline's most dramatic scenes take place on the road. From the first day of the production, Terry's been dreading these car shots. They're visually dull, and it's difficult to communicate with the actors during a take. But Terry's determined to capture the right emotional intensity from these scenes. Ain't this the life? Good Lord,